Okay. So the REVEAL study is a large non-interventional study involving patients with polycythemia vera, a rare myeloproliferative neoplasm. And this study is including 2,500 patients, so it's going to be the largest study of its kind. And, and the goal is to learn about the contemporary de demographics, the clinical consequences and their risk factors, the impact on quality of life, looking at the impact of symptoms and how they change over time, but also looking at the impact from therapies, how they help quality of life or, or possibly negatively impact quality of life, how therapy or the chronic disease impacts the patient's finances and work productivity, how it impacts their emotional space. So we're, we're looking at a number of, of different factors and we're very excited to have completed enrollment for 2,500 patients. The study is necessary because a lot of our prior insights about polycythemia vera, about the similar types of questions that we're looking at, a lot of them come from single center academic studies. These are very well, you know, highly renowned academic institutions, but they're single centers they're academically oriented tertiary care referral centers. We're going to take 80% of our patients, 80% of the 2,500 coming from community practices. So it gives us a real world view of contemporary polycythemia vera. So this is a non-interventional study. This is an observational study. So patients who have a diagnosis of PV and are under the care of hematologists are included in this study as long as they're older than 18 and they're not part of another clinical trial. And strictly observational, non-interventional. So we're, we're observing what happens in clinical practice and then the patients are also um, completing patient re reported outcome tools at um, scheduled interviews so that we can see how symptoms change over time when followed prospectively. We also have a very large sample bank and these samples can hopefully be used to help us answer questions about disease pathogenesis or answer questions about risk factors for common consequences such as thrombosis or blood clotting. So we're very excited about the study. We have clinical data and last night we presented our poster on the prevalence of cardiovascular risk factors in patients with polycythemia vera. So polycythemia vera is a blood clotting disease. It's one of the most common causes of morbidity for patients, especially in the ten, first 10 to 15 years of their illness. And when we treat patients for polycythemia vera, it's largely based on our prediction of their blood clotting risk. And what we're using now is unfortunately very generic. We're looking at their age and whether they've had a blood clotting history or a blood clotting event in the past to distinguish if they're low risk or high risk. That's very, very generic. You could do that for any patient in any hematology clinic. So we want to become um, more specific. That's the overall goal. But what we also know is that this is a chronic disease um, that needs to be managed longitudinally and carefully with primary care doctors. And what we're looking at specifically is the prevalence of other risk factors that might increase thrombotic tendencies. And so we looked at cardiovascular events, or cardiovascular risk factors, I should say. We looked at the prevalence of hypertension, abnormal cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, and smoking. So uh, these are standard cardiovascular risk factors that a primary care physician will always assess for. And what we found is that 86% of the patients in our cohort, so 86% of 2,300 patients that were studied, had at least one cardiovascular risk factor. And the most prevalent was hypertension. Interestingly, what we don't know yet is how much of the hypertension was because of their polycythemia vera, because polycythemia vera increases red blood cell counts. That increases the thickness of the blood, and that can increase the, the, uh, the manifestation of hypertension. So we don't know how much is actually due to the disease itself versus a distinct risk factor that will add to their, their potential cardiovascular burden over time. What we found is that those patients who had cardiovascular risk factors were more likely to have a thrombotic event compared to the small subset of patients that had no cardiovascular risk factors. So what we can think of for the future is that when we're assessing patients for their thrombotic risk, that we should at least become a little bit more specific looking at patient risk factors, not looking just at age and whether they've had a blood clotting event, but looking at the presence of their cardiovascular risk profile and making sure that that's managed aggressively and, and also perhaps moving towards a three-tiered system for how we assess thrombosis in patients with polycythemia vera.